Good day, everyone across North America. This is John Garmendi with Sony's Professional Solutions of America. For those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. For those of you who have been tuning in to this series since early 2020, we'd like to welcome you back. We look forward to seeing some of you at our upcoming Phoenix Roadshow stop on the 16th and 17th of this month. We developed these webinars so that our customers, resellers, integrators, and consultants can stay informed and up to date on Sony's latest products and solutions, especially during this last year, while many of us were not able to meet in person. During today's webinar entitled The Latest Advancements in Large Display Technology, we'll discuss the evolution of large display technology as well as how a new and extended lineup of solutions brings Sony image quality to a wide range of commercial applications and environments. Before we start, just a few items of housekeeping. As in all of our webinars, there'll be an opportunity for Q&A. So please submit your questions via the in-event meeting question panel. We'll post links referred to during the webinar in the chat panel, and we'll also post a link to our YouTube playlist where you can view all of our archived Tech Tuesday webinars. Joining me today will be Sander Phipps, Senior Solution Sales Engineer here at Sony. I'll turn it over to Sander now, and I'll join you back here for Q&A afterward. Thank you, John, um, and thanks for everyone for attending. Um, again, my name is Sander Phipps, Senior Solutions Engineer, and I, I kind of want to walk through Sony's display history and then go forward and discuss um, um, kind of where we're going with our three main pillars of display. So with that, um, our agenda, we want to talk a little bit about, like I said, some history and milestones of Sony's display development over the years. Um, and probably more importantly, talk about choosing the right option for applications. I'm a big believer in the right tool for the right job. Um, and then talk about the three main pillars of our large display solutions, um, Bravia Pro, Projection, and our CLED. And then at the very end, um, talk a little bit about um, our partner efforts and our collaboration efforts with third party companies and partners. And finally, a little bit of case studies and, and Q&A. So with that, um, the next slide. So the history of Sony's display. So this is a bit of an eye chart. But um, with that said, there's some interesting things here that I kind of want to touch upon. Sony has been, for a very long time, a leader in professional display industry. Um, we made the first home theater projector. We um, launched first 4K native resolution projector. Um, we have been a pioneer in the development of three LCD technology. Um, we were the first projection company to launch a laser phosphor projector. And we've showed our first micro LED technology actually 10 years ago, which is a little hard to believe it's been 10 years. Um, as well as we have been in selling and developing our professional Bravia display line now for four years. Um, this is all culminated with this past year launching of the um, 10,000 lumen native P3 4K projector. That's an industry standard in, um, image quality. So next slide. So when you talk about the AV landscape, if you will, there are a lot of challenges that one has to take into account. Um, first of all, it's a lot of different applications and use cases a lot of them can be boiled down to to imparting information digital signage weight finding stuff like that or teaching obviously education um, and also encompassing or engrossing or captivating people large entertainment applications and we feel we have display technology and solutions for all of those and with that said i'll, I'll drill down a little bit more how they will fit into all of those, our technology fits in all of those in a minute. So next slide. <clears throat> you can kind of boil down our display technology into four main pillars, if, if you will. Um, on the one side is our professional display, our professional Bravia. These are 
direct view LED type devices, um, more than adequate for sizes up to 100 inch, you know, stepping up to our three LCD projectors, which is the workhorse of our projector lineup. Then our 4K SXRD projectors, which are our industry standard in image and picture quality. And finally, our crystal LED, um, which if anyone's had the opportunity to see that in person, seeing is definitely believing in that in this case. Um, and obviously we can make very large images with our direct view LED walls. So next slide. So professional Bravia displays. Um, what we've done with our Bravia displays is first of all, we've taken a Bravia television, which is, in, Bravia TVs are probably one of, if not the best televisions in the market. If, 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 if you ask people off the street, what do they think of Sony? Um, the first two things will probably come to mind is PlayStations and televisions, because we have that reputation for our imagery. Coupled that with professional applications, and I'll talk about these applications, but it basically add-ons, if you will, to the display device to make it tailored for professional use cases. And then feature sets, 24-7, serial and IP control, um, extremely low failure rates. And finally, couple that with the fact that we offer professional services behind our displays, full three-year warranties, five-year options, service contracts, configure, configuration, um, makes our displays uniquely suited for the professional market. So next slide. So an Abravia Pro line, um, you can actually break it out more or less into two subsets. There is our mid-range, um, bright models, if you will, 300 to 500, from 32 all the way up to 75. And then our high end, which goes up to 650 nits, and from 43 to 100 inch. So the takeaway is we have a way here is we have a large array of displays that we have a lot of monitors, we have a lot of um, devices that will fit many and most applications. So next slide. So what makes our displays different? Um, there's a couple of ways that, you know, manufacturers go after the professional display market. A lot of manufacturers actually make a lot of models that are kind of niche or, or tailored for particular unique applications. We did it a little bit different. We decided to put a lot of intelligence and a lot of horsepower in horsepower into the display. What this does is it allows the dis display to be tailored, adapted, tweaked, configured, however you want to put it, for a particular application. Different applications need different subsets of features and, and, and applications, if you will. For instance, education has needs that are different than retail, which are different than, say, um, hospitality or corporate. Um, moving forward, next slide. Some of the differences and some of the features that make the Bravia professional displays um, unique and adaptable, or one is something we call Pro Mode. Pro Mode. Pro Mode is a software user interface configuration that allows the end user or the integrator um, to set up the display and tailor its capabilities to that specific need. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, full IP control. So for more advanced systems where I'm controlling multiple displays or doing a lot of things remotely over the, over the cloud or over a network, I have full access to the monitor, if you will. So I can do whatever I need to do remotely, but from a controlling and, and presenting things, if you will. And we, ha we do mirroring. We do both Chromecast and Apple AirPlay. So for applications where end users are um, BYOD, bringing your own device, this is a very convenient, easy way to get their content up on the screen without a, um, a lot of cable jockeying, if you will, and a lot of configuration. It, it's, it's, the idea is to keep it simple. So next slide. So. Uh, talked a minute ago about pro usage. This is just um, pro mode usage. 
and these examples we cite here are just a few of many things you can do. But just to give you an idea to kind of stimulate thought a little bit, if you will, for instance, in a corporate application, I can have wake up on signal. So I'm going to have a quick meeting in a, in a, a huddle area. I simply plug in my laptop, the monitor turns on and starts displaying my content. No one's going to go scrambling, looking for a remote control. No one's looking for a cable or, or in, interface or what have you. Makes it very straightforward. Um, education is something called pro mode lock. So in other words, I can unlock and make accessible the features I want to be used. And I can lock out features that I don't want to be used, that I don't want some malicious student playing around with setups or, or putting things on that shouldn't be on the monitor. Um, and in retail, things like power scheduling, I can set up ahead of time, okay, this display is going to come on at 10 o'clock when the store opens, and it's going to get cut off at 9 o'clock when the store closes, um, saving power, saving life, and again, making things simple. So next slide. Behind the pro mode and behind a lot of the capabilities that we have, we're using um, a system on the chip configuration. System on a chip basically is built in intelligence, if you will, that allows you to manage content, control the monitor, control the operation, and do a lot of things that typically in the past one would have to do with third party appliances or more remote inter, um, interconnections, if you will. For instance, so in our case, we're using an Android based system. So the beauty of this is there is a labyrinth of different applications that you can have, that you can develop, that you can create to tailor this display for your particular application. Um, and because this is all built into the system, there's no extra appliances, there's no other failure points that you need to worry about. It is a, I shouldn't say self-contained, but it's a system that runs with minimal outside influence, which makes it a much more powerful system, yet a much more reliable system. So next slide. Going to the, another part of our display pillars, if you will, is our professional projection systems. Um, Sony's unique in that Sony makes our own imagers. So we make three LCD projectors. We make LCD panels. We make what we call SXRD projectors, which is a form of LCOS projection projectors. We make our own panels which means we are very good at making very good images because we're controlling the optical engines in the projectors and a lot of the signal processing around the projector. So one of our key strengths in all of our display technologies, Bravia Pro projectors, and I'll talk a little bit with our uh, crystal LED, we make very good images. We make images probably second to none because we have all this core technology built into our displays. Um, as well as pro professional enhanced feature sets are built into the projectors. Um, our projectors typically are very small for their brightness and capability, um, long life, minimal maintenance. Um, there is a lot of thought about installation flexibility which means having the right amount of lenses and the lens coverage, wide lens shift ranges so I can install the projector um, not just in one spot, but I have some flexibility in installation. So if there is an air duct in the way or what have you in your installation, the projector can be moved a little bit, be installed, minimal infrastructure change, and still make a good image. Um, and again, like the Bravia Pro, we're, we have our professional service solutions behind it so we can do three we come with a three-year warranty we have advanced exchanges we can have extended warranty coverage um so a little bit of peace of mind behind the product if you will so next slide so i mentioned that we have both our lcd projectors a three lcd projector again we make our own imagers um NRSXRD projectors, which is a type of LCOS. 
I mentioned before, we're a lot about the right tool for the right job. We make both types of um, um, projection technology because they both have, frankly, have strengths and weaknesses. Three LCD projectors are a very good, very bright image that is, can be reproduced and can be produced at a reasonable cost. SXRD projectors have tremendous black level and absolute accuracy in color reproduction. So if I have an application where color reproduction is critical, say art museum or something along those lines, then I want a projector that's going to recreate the image as faithfully as possible. Um, conversely, if I'm in a lecture hall, I need a projector that is bright and reasonably cost, um, and a 3LCD projector is perfect for that application. So next question, or right, next slide, sorry. Um, our 3LCD projectors, we typically call them business and education projection systems. Um, as I mentioned, we were the first company to produce a projector with laser phosphor. We call this the next technology Z-Phosphor or Z-Phosphor light source. That allows us, coupled with our three LCD bright error LCD imagers, to produce a very vibrant, accurate, color-rich image. Um, we couple that with some intelligence and some, app, uh, some smarts, if you will, in the projector that allows the projector to optimize itself to the ambient room setting. So for instance, it can adjust brightness for the appropriate amount of ambient light in the room. Um, room gets brighter, that makes the projector brighter. If the room is not so bright, it backs it down. Um, and third, one of the chief design criteria of the projectors is its physical design, physical appearance. <clears throat> the idea is we want the projectors to be installed hung in the ceiling, where have you, and be as unobtrusive as possible. Small footprint, clean lines, clean design, and quiet fan speed, quiet fans. In an ideal scenario, we think the projectors can be hung and put in a position where you basically don't realize they're there. That That's the end goal. Um, and our design, you'll see a kind of commonality of our professional projector design the color, the shape, the form, that's what we're going after is a very sleek, innocuous design. So next slide. On the second part of this projection leg, if you will, is our SXRD projectors. They're all native 4K, um, three chip devices, um, outstanding contrast ratio, best in class, um, and very, very accurate reproduction. Um, color reproduction. That goes back to the fact that the LCOS, the SXRD imager is very good in accurate color reproduction and very good at immersive type imagery. Um, they're also designed to be workhorses, um, completely sealed optics. There's not even the air filter to change. There's no, no concern about dust getting into the optics. Um, the, the optics are also liquid cooled that allows them to run 24-7 heavy-duty type usage environments. Next slide, please. <clears throat> and then the next pillar is crystal LED. Um, some people have referred to it as C-LED. We are um, in, depending on how you look at it, third generation of our crystal LED technology. Crystal LED is unique in the direct view LED market. It is a direct view LED device that uses something called a micro LED. A micro LED is what it says it is, a very, very, very small LED device. The beauty of this is when you look at a C-LED wall, what you're looking at, your crystal LED wall, what you're looking at appears when it's off appears to be black because most of the surface area is not an LED diode. And what that gives you is incredible dynamic range, incredible black level. Um, this technology also gives you um, an incredibly wide viewing angle. 
179 degrees is that actually the, the specification. Along with that, um, there's some features that come with it besides the outstanding picture quality. And as I mentioned before, if there's any, if there's ever been a display device where seeing is believing, Crystal LED is back. The uh, I don't think you'll ever, ever, ever hear anybody say anything negative about the picture quality of uh, Crystal LED. It, as I mentioned, the, the feature sets in, do include 24-7 operation. So it can run command and control, mission critical type app applications. Um, it's a very stable technology, a very efficient technology. It runs very cool by the nature of the micro LEDs. It is also TAA compliant um, or trade compliant, um, which obviously lends itself well for certain government and other applications that have to have TAA compliant devices. Um, and once again, it's backed by our professional services. So um, there are a number of service contract options. It has remote diagnostics and intelligent monitoring capabilities built in, again, for mission critical critical applications where it cannot go down. It has the hooks and the capabilities to be monitored and controlled and serviced that way. So next slide. Currently we offer um, two versions of Crystal LED, what we call the C series and the B series. The idea behind this is the C series um, is a high contrast version, very, very, very deep blacks. So for applications where the room lighting is somewhat controlled or is not a tremendous amount of direct lighting on the wall, I can make a tremendously rich, compelling, engaging image on this wall using the, the C panels, if you will. The B series have slightly less contrast, but are brighter. So in applications where it's a very well lit installation, corporate lobby, something along those lines of a very bright room, then I have the brightness to match or to um, achieve the image I want to achieve in that brightness level in the room. There are two resolution versions, if you will, 1.26 and a 1.58 millimeter pitch. Um, again, right tool for the right job, depending on the size of the image, the content, what you're trying to do with the content, um, will determine which resolution is probably best for you. So next slide. Some technology besides just the micro LED that, that the crystal LED has is one, something called the X1 processor chip. The X1 processor chip is a, is a basically an artificial intelligence chip that will manipulate drive, control the signal to maximize um, detail, predict um, and create less noise and more detail in imagery, um, especially in low lights and highlights, if you will. Um, it was originally, this technology is originally developed for our HDR televisions and it lends itself well to crystal LED. We also use something called reality creation. Reality creation is a predictive scaler. And what I mean by that is if I have a certain resolution of display and I have a res signal resolution that is not the same, this technology will predict or create or change the pixels to match the resolution of the display. So in other words, I can take a lower resolu resolution image and make it match the image of imager or the LED wall such that I get a very clean, very sharp image, even if it is not the same resolution as the wall. Um, we also use a motion flow technology that was actually developed for our projectors. Motion flow lessens image blur. It, it's a, a shuttering type scheme that makes a very high speed motion look very sharp without a blur. And finally, the, the micro LEDs, which I talked about, coupled with 22-bit processing. So we have wide color, very rich blacks because of the micro LED. And the fact that I'm driving them with a 22-bit signal 
means a very smooth, no gradation, very lifelike image, if you will. So next slide. So LED walls for video production. Um, Crystal LED has kind of started and is kind of the backbone, if you will, behind a, a market or applications that's starting to really take hold known as virtual production. What this means is um, I can create, we can create a virtual backdrop and do film, do a number of type of production applications using this virtual world behind you instead of going out and actually filming the world and shooting the, the, the creation or what have you in front of or going out into the real world to do it, I'm doing it in front of a wall and doing it virtually. Because of the technology, the signal processing, the image capability, this allows this to happen. So it, it opens an entirely new world in content creation. There's actually applications for in B2B and, and, and the corporate boardroom type applications where there are multiple meeting rooms spread across the world. It's a different type of um, use case that the technology has allowed us to do that we really couldn't do up until a couple of years ago. So it is a very interesting thing um, that is transpiring. Sony is one of the leaders in this because of, of course, our crystal LED. And on the other side, we make production cameras and we're part of the, the whole food chain, if you will, of creating this content like this. So next slide. Um, a couple of use cases besides that. Um, Crystal LED has, uh, like I said, an incredible amount of resolution, incredible amount of, of detail and, and picture fidelity, if you will, or accurate picture reproduction. One of which is an aerospace industry. It's a defense contractor that actually uses Crystal LED in a 3D application um, that they use to create and train people on field stripping and assembly of devices um, in a virtual environment instead of actually do, sending people out to do it in the real world. Because the imagery, because of the capability is so realistic, um, this company is, uh, uh, is capable of actually developing product virtually in a 3D environment. One of our partners, Mechdyne, is, a, is an expert in, in creating and managing 3D content, married that with the, the Crystal LED product, and it has really created a solution that only we could fulfill because of our technology. So next slide. On the Baravia Pro side, for instance, um, one of the case studies is University of Central Florida. Um, because of the A, picture quality, B, the pro tool sets, if you will, um, it allowed the university to install Bravia Pros around campus. Um, and they can be used in such a way that's very easy for people to just simply sit down and plug in a laptop and display their meeting or display their content. And then when not in use, the displays can be used as essentially signage devi devices to show things about the, the campus and what's going on. Um, the, the, I guess, combination, if you will, of sizes of product versus the picture quality versus the tool sets that allowed them, allowed them to configure the devices for their need made our devices perfect for them. So, um, next slide. And then lastly, the 380, um, this gentleman um, has sold several of the 380s, mostly actually kind of in pro and home theater environments. But his take on this projector was that is essentially second to none. He's never seen a projector actually look like this. 
The 380 is our flagship of our 4K SXRD line. And it is, um, has tremendous dynamic range, tremendous color accuracy, um, and brings a capability to projection that essentially wasn't available before. Um, and he considers the image of this the, the absolute best that can be had on a projection platform. And you can see actually that we've won, you know, a handful of awards in the industry um, because of the actual performance of this device. So next slide. So the Alliance Partner Network, I wanted to talk a little bit about it, kind of off the cuff slightly, but Sony is making a concerted and dedicated effort to align with various companies, partners um, that make parallel products to enhance or to create systems built around our display products. So things like TSI Touch, for instance, to make, that we can make touch screens for our, our flat panels, um, various mount manufacturers for both projectors and and our Bravia Pro, but also for our crystal LED devices, um, you know, back frames and things that make our displays shine, make our displays perfectly suited for various applications. Because especially when you're talking about direct view LED, the, the way you install them, what you can do that with them, especially if you have the right partners making infrastructure around them, um, Really, you can do the imagination is almost the limit. There's a lot of very creative designs if you have the right partners to, to put that together. And, and they kind of offer the glue that um, we we need to make that kind of things happen. So, you know, please talk to us about applications you have because, no, we may not make the, the back frame or we may necessarily make the device um, that will make this total solution but we will work with the partners to make that solution. And that's a strong commitment that we have that, that we're really developing and hopefully um, can produce the solutions that people need. So next slide. So here's a slide that you know has a number of, I guess, vertical markets, if you will, and that I've talked about and that would use our display technology. I think couple key things you'll notice about these. Um, one, all of them are going to require exceptional picture quality. If an application needs a good image, needs to faithfully reproduce an image, needs to reproduce an image that captivates or captures people's attentions or imagination, Sony is a company that can do that. Um, secondly, these are demanding applications. They have to have the right control, they have to have the right capabilities besides just the image quality behind them. Um, and that is where we shine. Sony has a lot of powerful feature sets built into our displays. And now that we're collaborating with a lot more third party companies, um, we can bring kind of a holistic approach to a display solution. So I think that is the last side, slide. So I think we're up to questions. Hey, great. Thank you, Sander. Um, really good information. Uh, I think I'll start off actually with one that's uh, closely related to uh, uh, to to one of your points that, that you just made at the end of the of the presentation. Uh, we've got a question from uh, I believe it was Emir, and he asks, uh, does Sony manufacture uh, custom enclosures? for our displays. And Amir, no, we, we don't. But uh, as Sander mentioned, um, we do work with uh, several partners who do. Uh, I've asked, uh, we've actually, we have, I believe already posted uh, a link to our ProSony Alliances page. If it's not there yet, it'll, it'll appear uh, momentarily. And if you go onto that Alliances page, you can um, take a look at some of the manufacturers with whom we have uh, relationships. And uh, one of them is Palmer Digital, PDG, Palmer D Digital Group. And they are in the business of manu manufacturing kiosks. 
um, and they have manufactured kiosks specifically for our Sony ProBravia displays. So uh, please take a look there. And uh, again, you can see uh, all of the other uh, solutions providers and manufacturers uh, that have complementary solutions to Sony products, including um, digital signage partners whose signage solutions will run natively on our ProBravia uh, Android system on a chip that, uh, that Sander had mentioned. And um, uh, uh, TSI Touch, touch screen solutions, as well as uh, a number of control systems uh, partners. Um, there was a call, uh, there was a question from Larry uh, Sander, and he asks um, about CLED, Crystal LED, can you use it in a curved configuration? Uh, yes, you can, on a horizontal axis, you, you can con concave it, if you will. I'm going to make sure I get that right, but yes, you can. Great. Um, I know there was a question from uh, Robert asking about the best way for a community college to critically color manage their large flat panel displays for their photography and imaging program. Oh, that's a good one. Um, the best way is not necessarily going to be the least expensive way is a good photo a good photometer, a good um, color analyzing meter, specifically um, designed for LCD display, assuming it's LCD displays. Um, there's two keys to that. The, the meter can read the color output, if you will, or the chromaticity coordinates to be precise. precise. Um, the other half of that is you need to know how the content was created. So ideally, the, uh, the display is going to match what the content or how the content was originally created. So. So yes, there are ways to do it. Fantastic. Uh, question from Tim. Tim asks, in general, can Sony digital signage displays um, accept HDCP encoded signals? And yes. actually, Sandra, I, I can actually answer that one too. <laughs> but the answer is yes. And uh, I believe it, now this, this is where you have to keep me honest. I think we, we can currently uh, support up to HDCP version 2.3 in our 40H, 40J, 30J, and uh, 35 series of ProBravia displays. I think you're right. I, yeah. I, I, I'll, to be honest, I get the version level somewhat mixed up sometimes, but I believe that is correct. We, we certainly can get back to you to confirm that. So, Tim, actually, uh, one of the other things that we'll post, if we haven't already done so in the chat, you can take a look at our ProBravia Knowledge Center, and it's uh, uh, pro-bravia.sony.net, and um, I happen to know that one of the FAQs listed on that has to do with uh, HDCP uh, support. So you can take a look there, as well as uh, quite a bit uh, very useful information um, on all of our ProBravia displays up there at the ProBravia Knowledge Center. Um, here's one. Here's one that we actually didn't mention, Sander, and uh, but I, I think this is a great question from Doug because it does point to uh, not, not only Sony's um, Sony's heritage and Sony's legacy in display, but also um, the breadth of our, of our product line. Whereas today we focused primarily on our large uh, presentation solutions, projectors, crystal LED, ProBravia displays. But I, I think everyone knows well that uh, we also make some uh, monitors for, for critical viewing, uh, both in the, uh, in the media and broadcast content creation side of the house but also in the, uh, in the healthcare application. And Doug asks about the best type of high resolution X-ray, um, the best type of display for high resolution X-ray images where shading is extremely important. And I don't wanna put you on the spot, Sander. I, I know it's not what we deal with every day, but maybe you wanna talk a little bit about DICOM? Yeah, I mean, we do have several monitors um, 
and we we have a, a group within Sony that specializes in healthcare, and I'm not in that group, but let me put it that way, but um, that have a DICOM gamma adjustment. DICOM gamma basically is a gamma curve that the monitor is pre-programmed that matches essentially the black to white curve or response curve of imagery like MRI or X-ray or what have you. Um, our monitors are designed for consultative and and teaching applications. They are not typically designed for um, critical diagnostic applications. So um, there's a distinction in the healthcare industry about that. But yes, we have monitors that have DICOM gamma presets, and that's essentially what you're looking for. That's what that that setting is for, I think. So, uh, we have a question from Lisa. She's asking about the refresh rate on the um, on the SXRD projector. Um, the projectors actually natively run at 120 hertz. Um, so if you Give it a 60 hertz signal it essentially is double writing if you will if you um give it 120 hertz signal it will display at 120 hertz um which will also give you 60 hertz per eye if you want to do 3d excellent thank you oh we've got uh, uh th this is interesting so um this is what i love about this live live production right so We've actually got someone in the chat here uh, who's a Sony um, Sony person from our uh, custom install group, Jason, and he reminds us that uh, this is going back to the uh, the color matching uh, question for the uh, for the photography. I think it was a, um, the school was in Northern Virginia. Right. Uh, Jason reminds us here that Calman software, C A L dash M A N software and hardware can calibrate a TV using their tools and software. And there's a Calman app for Sony in the Play Store. So thank you very much, Jason. Yes, thank you. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, so Curtis asks, was, uh, was that Mechdyne curved display projected or C-LED? It was C-LED. Um... It's an 8K width, if you will, a, um, twice 4K resolution, if you want to think of it that way. And it is um, around 20 degree curvature, if I remember correctly off the top of my head. Great. Thank you. Um, question from Andrew. Uh, Andrew asks about uh, about supply chain and how is him and Sony faring with the supply chain disruptions? So that's a that's that's a good question. Um, we're not we're not going to get into it too deeply, although, although I can tell you that Sony has the advantage of being both a a product manufacturer as well as a component manufacturer. So um, we um, although of course there are, there are many um, third party sourced uh, components in in any number of our products. Um, typically, the primary components are Sony manufactured, so we're able to. Um, I think we we are at a, a bit of an advantage there compared to the competition. We've been able to provide um, uh, products uh, for critical installations where others have not, and I can tell you that we are managing our um, our supply chain and our inventory levels very closely. So I would recommend that you work with your local Sony representative and they will do everything they can to make sure that you hit uh, any timelines for, uh, for installations or project milestones. Um, okay, so question from William. And Sander, I don't know, uh, he says that we're starting to see a number of PTZ cameras on the market that can encode video over IP streams, correct? Um, is there any uh, is there any trend toward doing that on the display end so as to eliminate the need for a separate decoder box? That's an interesting question. I mean, currently today, the, the simple answer is no. I mean, we... 
Um, our business projectors have HD base T interface, which is sort of the same thing, but not really the same thing. Um, but that is an interesting industry trend that we are closely watching. Very good. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions. <coughs> Uh, Valentino has a question. Uh, Valentino, you're asking about uh, repair for ProBravia. We will contact you after this webinar and get you uh, connected with the uh, with, with the right contacts at Sony Service or um, if it's under warranty, your local reseller. Mike asks about hardware for uh, hanging hardware for the 100 inch TV. Now, Mike, Sony does not manufacture uh, mounts. Uh, we work with a number of third party mount manufacturers, such as uh, um, uh, Peerless, Draper, um, and a number of others. So um, I would refer you to, to those companies. Uh, let's see. Nick asks if the session is being recorded. Yes, Nick, this session is being recorded. Uh, as with all of our other um, uh, Tech Tuesday webinars, and you can find them. There'll be a link uh, to the to the playlist um, in the chat where you can see the archived webinars. And today's will probably be posted to that site uh, by the end of the week or uh, very early. Um, next week. Uh, Tom asks, uh, what are you doing with virtual production studios? Well, that's a, that, that's a big question, Tom, but as you know, Sony, um, Sony uh, um, um, is, uh, is fortunate in that we participate in many parts of the virtual production chain. Uh, we, um, we have uh, probably what, what would be considered the highest end production cameras in that space with our, our Cine Alta projectors. And as Sander described, um, the adoption of, uh, of our crystal LED um, uh, uh, video wall technology in that space for use as actually part of the set and even, um, e even uh, part of the actual lighting of the set. So, um, you know, we're doing quite a bit we're doing quite a bit in that space, and uh, if you've uh, if if you've uh, heard if you heard the keynote address at uh, at uh, or our press conference, I'm sorry, our press conference at CES, you know that that's an area that uh, Sony is very focused on in the uh, in the upcoming year. So stay tuned. And I think we may have come to the end of our questions. I would ask the. Uh, uh, the producer, just to scroll through one more time. Okay, and it looks like, yes, we have, uh, we've, oh, no, there's one more. Sander um, Tomas is asking about um, the life of the laser phosphor engine in our business projectors. Um, at, I always preface this by saying that the optical engine and in in projectors are sort of like a car tire. It depends on how hard you run them, frankly. But at max brightness, you are going to get at least 20,000 hours. If you not quite max, you'll get a little bit more, frankly. Okay. And uh, someone from our, uh, our uh, PR team, Allison, has just posted uh, a link to a press release on the Mechdyne Crystal LED project. And I would ask Chris to please copy that and post it. Oh, he did. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Chris. Okay, so for those of you with uh, additional questions on the Mechdyne uh, CLED install that, that Sander uh, had referenced, uh, that link is in the chat as well. So I do believe we are now at the end of our questions. I wanna thank everyone for your time as always. Thank you for uh, for joining us um, um, every uh, every two weeks for our uh, Tech Tuesdays, and I want to remind you of next um, the next Tech Tuesday, which will be on Tuesday, March first, 
And this will be the second in our three-part series on reawakening student engagement. So uh, with that, I wish everyone a, uh, a continue to stay healthy, safe, and in some parts of the country, warm. And I look forward to uh, seeing you all again. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you.